20 minutes for a depression new deal and war, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> get right to it. Uh, Texas was, of course, still mainly rural in 1929, and many thought the stock market uh, um, or the state would not uh, suffer from the, uh, the stock market crash. Uh, few Texans, in fact, had engaged in the overinvestment in the unregulated runaway stock market which was one of the causes of the Great Depression. But many Texans were victims uh, of the uh, collapse in farm <coughs> prosperity, uh, which was another cause of the Depression. Overproduction in the 20s and early 30s uh, was so bad that many farmers uh, could not uh, uh, get enough money for their cotton to even pay the cost of gin. Uh, so they would just dump the cotton along the roadsides uh, to water. In the depth of the Depression, 1932-33, there were maybe 400,000 Texans unemployed. Uh, although, well, keep in mind that women were not really part of the workforce at that time. So that was about one-fourth of uh, the workforce. Uh, about 100,000 Texans were penniless, uh, uh, living in caves and uh, shanties uh, made of discarded boxes. Uh, crime rose, of course. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde were holding up uh, banks and uh, stores in the early 30s. Uh, cities uh, cut school expenditures drastically. Of course, you don't have to be in a depression for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> turned off street lights uh, and uh, sold off their zoo animals in some cases. Many churches were forced to close. <coughs> um, farmers, uh, cities, oil men, bankers, every group you can think of really for state or federal aid. Uh, Governor Ross Sterling, elected in 1930, tried to cut oil and cotton production to raise their prices, but it was blocked by the courts. At the national level, our most famous politician uh, was uh, Cactus Jack Garner, John Nance Garner from U Valley. Uh, he was a floor leader for President Wilson, uh, yet, uh, he did not offer a single piece of important uh, legislation in his 30-year congressional career. With the Depression, uh, the Democrats returned to power and Garner was elected Speaker of the House in 1931, and he was soon being touted for the presidency by the first uh, newspaper. Uh, Speaker Garner and other Democrats uh, did pass a public works bill in both houses. It would have provided work relief for hundreds of thousands of the unemployed. Uh, but uh, Republican President uh, Herbert Hoover uh, clung to the belief that charity uh, should remain a private local matter, and he vetoed the bill. The president, however, did create uh, the Reconstruction Finance Corporation uh, to provide loans to banks, uh, insurance companies, railroads, and other businesses. And Texas Democrat Jesse Jones uh, was a member of the RFC board. Hoover and the Republican Party had taken credit for the prosperity uh, of the 20s, and now uh, they were forced to take the blame uh, for the hard times uh, in the early 30s. Uh, Hobo jungles became Hoover hotels, uh, jackrabbits were Hoover hogs. <laughs> a majority of Texans changed their thinking. The old ideas of extreme self-reliance, uh, limited uh, local government, uh, small government, uh, uh, business dominance of the economy, uh, all these uh, notions uh, were discarded. And in 1932, uh, the governor of New York, uh, Franklin Roosevelt, and his running mate, uh, Jack Garner, uh, did capture 89% of the votes in Texas, and uh, Roosevelt was elected president overwhelmingly. Also in 1932, uh, the Fergusons came back into office, uh, uh, exploiting the East Texas oil field chaos of the hard times and Sterling's uh, wealth. Uh, Paul Ferguson's <coughs> governor's home uh, had 20 bathtubs. Well, voters favored uh, more state aid uh, to uh, depression victims, and with Ferguson's support uh, in 1933, a state constitutional amendment allowed the sale of up to $20 million in bonds for unemployment relief. Uh, the Ferguson's even had their own newspaper. Uh, you may not be able to see it from the back, but we'll have it around all day and perusal. <laughs> um, 
The Fergusons retired uh, in 1934, and uh, their elected uh, successor was Attorney General uh, Jimmy Allred. As governor, Allred secured uh, old age pensions, uh, but could not get them funded by the legislature. It was under Allred that the chaotic East Texas field, uh, the oil field, was brought under control and proved to be a great private sector stimulus to the economy. Uh, so did the lumber industry, at least by the late 30s. The lumber industry is coming back and the uh, commercial utilization of yellow pine. And because of these two giant industries, uh, Texas, it is said, uh, did not suffer quite as much as most states during the Great Depression. I wouldn't press that very far, but I guess it's true. It's far to go. In the nation's capital, um, Congressman Sam Rayburn from Bono now became the most prominent uh, Texan in the U.S. House. His parliamentary strength and skill was responsible for the creation of the Securities Exchange Commission, still around, uh, regulating the stock market, and uh, the law preventing uh, the monopolistic uh, holding company device for public utilities. Uh, Rayburn was elected Speaker of the House in 1940, and uh, a protege was elected in 1937 from this congressional district, uh, Lyndon Johnson, to Congress. Rayburn's legislation, of course, was part of the New Deal. Indeed, FDR's New Deal uh, is often conveniently divided into three uh, categories, relief, recovery, and reform. Uh, this is a 1930s poster uh, from New York. Uh, the work relief programs uh, included the Civilian Conservation Corps, the Public Works Administration, uh, the Works Progress Administration. They launched thousands of jobs, of course, of projects, uh, building streets and highways, uh, public buildings, city and roadside parks, airports, and so on. Some of these are pretty dirty jobs. Uh, imagine uh, hauling the back water on like Longhorn Cabin. Um, but they were jobs, tens of thousands. Business recovery, or recovery in general, was another part of the triad. Uh, business recovery was promoted by the National Industrial Recovery Act, uh, which set aside antitrust legislation and allowed uh, industries in the same line of business uh, to uh, fix prices and to fix production. It more or less guaranteed a profit. Uh, but the law also helped workers uh, by establishing a 40-hour maximum work week and uh, a 40 cent an hour minimum wage and the right of collective bargaining. So a number of unions were born in 1933, including in Texas. Uh, the NIRA, however, was struck down by the Supreme Court in 1935. Business recovery was also enhanced uh, by Mr. Hoover's uh, Reconstruction Finance Corporation, which Roosevelt retained and uh, he appointed Jesse Jones, uh, the Houston businessman, as chairman. Um, Jones uh, bailed out uh, hundreds of Texas corporations uh, during the Depression. Uh, he loaned, or the RFC loaned, over $100 million in Texas. And Jones helped FDR's, uh, or kept FDR's rapport with the business community, such as well. Scores of banks in Texas uh, have failed since 1929, wiping out millions of dollars in savings. Banking recovery was enhanced uh, largely uh, by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which guaranteed individual deposits up to $5,000. Recovery on the farms was effected by the AAA, the Agricultural Adjustment Administration, uh, which uh, paid farmers uh, not to grow crops. <coughs> And it worked. Uh, in 1935, uh, Texas farmers uh, withheld about five and a half uh, million acres from the production of cotton, wheat, and corn, and their income was 58% higher than in 1932. New Deal reform measures included uh, uh, the Wagner Act, uh, which legitimized collective bargaining and uh, allowed unions to reform in 1935. Uh, Social Security, uh, the TVA, which electrified Tennessee and inspired the establishment of the Lower Colorado River Authority and rural electric co-ops in Texas and elsewhere. Uh, cheap electric power, conservation of flood waters were among the results. And of course, Mr. Rayford's SEC and the Utility Holding Company Act were also part of the New York Reform. 
reforms. Only three states took in more money uh, than did Texas uh, from the federal government. Uh, $717 million up through 1937. That was about $3 million a week uh, that gave purchasing power to desperate Texans. It directly benefited the state's businesses. Uh, the conservative Texas Weekly reported that there was a close correlation between, between relief funds and retail sales because those on relief spent almost everything just to survive. Another boon to Texas was the rebuilding of our infrastructure. Uh, the roads, dams, parks, public buildings, they touched every county in this state. Uh, conservative critics said charged that the New Deal spent too much money on programs that did not always work and fostered needless bureaucracy. Critics on the left argued uh, that the New Deal didn't go nearly far enough and delivered no permanent solutions to such problems as unemployment and corporate power. The great majority of Texans at the time uh, that no programs would work any better and that federal relief, recovery, and reform uh, were necessary before the nation could come to grips uh, with the harshest economy since Reconstruction. Meanwhile, man and mother nature uh, caused a dust bowl on the southern Great Plains of overgrazing, overplowing, uh, wheat uh, did not hold the soil like the native grasses, and mother nature contributed drought beginning in 1931. Uh, the silt killed wheat. Deaths by suffocation were reported. Schools were closed, it was so dark on Sunday. Almost 350,000 people fled the southern Great Plains of Kansas, Colorado, Texas, parts of Oklahoma, and New Mexico. One man was so taken aback uh, when he was struck on the head by a drop of water that it took two buckets of sand in the face to revive. <laughs> <laughs> Texas tall tales have to get through. <laughs> New Deal agencies uh, taught uh, farmers on the Great Plains how to prevent soil erosion, uh, uh, instructed them in strip farming, contour plowing, uh, shelter belts were planted, thousands of miles of trees stretching from Kansas into Texas. National grasslands were created. So hard lessons were learned uh, by many who left uh, and by, uh, these are hard lessons learned by those who left. <coughs> Um, and by those who remain. Well, Governor Allred uh, stepped down after serving two uh, two-year terms. In 1938, a singing flower merchant, W. Lee O'Daniel, was elected governor. Uh, O'Daniel denounced the war in Europe and uh, denounced the idea of helping the Allies in 1939-41, but Pearl Harbor silenced uh, the isolationists. We had 55 major Army and Army Air Force bases in Texas, large naval training facilities in Galveston and Corpus. We had the women's uh, Air Force service pilots, the WASPs, uh, training at Sweetwater. They flew every plane in the U.S. arsenal. Uh, some of them flew for the Air Transport Command, whose deputy commander was uh, uh, C.R. Smith, uh, the founder of American Airlines in Fort Worth. Probably can't see that, but he's standing by FDR on this occasion, and he was a general uh, in the Army. Um, Texas led the nation in training aviators, uh, over 40,000 male pilots, one of whom managed to drop a bomb near Turkey, Texas, and kill a cow. <laughs> 750,000 Texans uh, saw active duty, 12,000 of them women, out of a population of 6.5 million though Texas added another million halfway through the war. Half a million Texans moved off the farms into cities. Several factories, corn people factories, were erected by the government and turned over to private enterprise, uh, including North American Aviation, Grand Prairie, and Conveyor on the west side of Fort Worth. Other huge plants uh, manufactured rubber, ammunition, steel, tin, paper. Uh, huge shipbuilding facilities were built by the government uh, in Fort Arthur uh, and Houston. Uh, Texas was rich in the sinews of war. Uh, 
Life magazine ran a big spread on the eve of the war uh, showing uh, Texas's <coughs> agricultural and mineral resources, uh, uh, citrus and cattle and so natural gas and sulfur. <coughs> uh, Texas oil played a mighty role in Allied victory. The industrial boom was matched by an agricultural boom, um, but so many Texans had left the farms so that uh, uh, mechanized farming techniques uh, expanded greatly, and braceros were imported uh, from Mexico under a tar system for seasonal work uh, that lasted until 1954. <coughs> Wartime work was available for just about all who wanted it, including women and minorities uh, who had faced severe discrimination for the war. Discrimination in hiring policies and on the jobs themselves did not suddenly end, of course, but the jobs were there. Still, black and Tejano resentment against segregation and low-level jobs uh, grew during the war. Wartime jobs were lost in 1945, of course, and discrimination continued, but it was never quite the same after the war. Uh, never quite the same as the suffocating pre-war biases. Everyone knew that women and minorities could work as well as Anglo males, uh, and support gradually built for federal legislation that established legal equality finally in the 1960s. Within the military during the war, uh, only blacks and Japanese Americans continued to fight in segregated units. A break in voting rights came in 1944 in the U.S. Supreme Court decision Smith versus Allwright. It was found unconstitutional to bar blacks from voting in the only Texas elections that mattered in this one party state, the Democratic primary. Uh, by 1946, black Texans were voting. Governor Polk Stevenson refused to spend money during the war. He even refused to call a special session of the legislature to consider a bill that would have allowed Texas soldiers in the field to vote without paying a poll tax because special sessions cost money. The North African campaign uh, prompted the establishment of the first POW camps in Texas, uh, which was judged to have the same climate as the Sahara Desert. Germans were mostly in uh, our prisons of war, about 80,000 of them in over 50 camps. Women on the home front who were denied nylon and silk, uh, so turned to liquid hosiery. Victoray uh, was a leading brand that could be sprayed on. Uh, some goods were rationed, of course, uh, coffee and uh, meat uh, and uh, cheese and so on, so you had to pay, pay for ration goods uh, with cash, but also with stamps. If you ran out of stamps, you were out of meat for that money. Uh, not all uh, women uh, worked in the uh, defense industries, of course. Uh, in some um, Texas school districts, in a few Texas school districts, so uh, women teachers uh, uh, during the Depression were fired if their husbands had full-time jobs. Uh, that rule was rescinded in some uh, districts uh, during the war. Uh, if you were married to a serviceman, it was okay. But if he returned home in cold condition, you were fired. <laughs> there were a lot of war heroes, but we're about out of time. Uh, you can read about them, of course, in your Texas history book. Uh, uh, so I guess I'd better uh, just wind up uh, with the, uh, the impact of the war. Uh, the war did propel the transformation of Texas into an industrial state. We did pay a price, of course, uh, particularly with 23,000 dead, about 5.7% of the nation's uh, total of 407,000. Another after effect uh, was the uh, disappearance of uh, depression era politics. Uh, there was in Texas a certain growing resentment during the war against the Democratic Party's operations in the nation's capital with the high wartime taxes, numerous regulations and agencies, and its movement toward embracing civil rights. Conservatism became the political norm during the war, although Franklin Roosevelt was easily, easily carried Texas in 1944, and time's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, questions, comments, accusations? <laughs> Explain the Texas regulars and like the Dixiecrat movement, like that whole kind of how that got started. Um, I do that in my book on Texas politics. Uh, um, 
Yes, it was a right-wing rebellion, a conservative rebellion against the New Deal. In fact, that's just what I was saying here at the end. Uh, that was the leading group um, that um, opposed Roosevelt. And uh, when they failed to take control of the Democratic Party, although they took control of one convention, another convention reversed it, the state convention, um, then they formed a third party. The problem with the Texas regulars and the third party effort was they had no candidate. Literally. Uh, so uh, in those days, you scratched out the names of the candidates and the parties you did not want. It was more fun to vote than <laughs> and, um, But if you scratched out Democrats and Republicans and voted for the Texas regulars electors, you didn't know who they were going to pick for president. That was a big problem. Um, so they only got about 13 percent. So I say there was a growing resentment. It was growing, and it's reflected in Governor Stevenson. In the, in, the, in the home state politics, it's much more conservative during the war. But in presidential politics, not so much so. Why did, why did John Vance Gardner leave the vice presidency? Well, uh, he wanted the presidency for himself. He didn't leave voluntarily. Um, the part, well, he broke with the president in 1937 on, on the court reform bill. He didn't say anything, but he was presiding over the Senate, the only duty that the vice president had. And uh, when the bill came up, he held his nose and walked down the center. Of the <laughs> <laughs> it's rare for a vice president to break with the president, but Gardner did it as a matter of principle for him. Uh, so he had no chance of being put on the ticket, and he had no chance of getting a nomination. Uh, so he went home, as reporters put it, to sulk among the goats. <laughs> Back to you, Val. But you, Val, you never crossed this thing with me. Never did. I mean, speak to what, you know, what similarities or differences you see between Texas' reaction to the Great Depression and Texas' reaction to the current recession? No. Well, um, some of those are still playing out. Um, for instance, uh, those hard lessons learned in West Texas and the Panhandle uh, and those programs that were adopted to deal with dust uh, those folks are facing the same problem again uh, with uh, um, uh, the Ogallala Aquifer is being prematurely uh, drained because of irrigation and uh, uh, population growth and uh, drought has set in. Uh, uh, so we're, we are yet we are yet to find out how they will meet this current challenge, but it's similar to the challenge of the third. Um, but more generally, uh, uh, Texas is a good deal more conservative today than it was in the 1930s. Uh, so uh, uh, the New Deal programs were embraced, but overwhelmingly by the population. Uh, I don't sense that same kind of uh, feeling about uh, programs today. Although it may be that uh, um, some programs are more popular than they seem, such as the, the new health care law, as, as provisions kick in and make them more popular. I'm not sure it's a good answer to that question. It's still playing out. It doesn't look the same, though. It doesn't feel the same. Um, the uh, Department of Agriculture, they, they have a saying that there's three power structures. You know, the, the Texans, the, the Mormons, and everybody else that's American. And uh, is this where the power came from the Texans during this time period, or uh, in the Department of Agriculture? Uh, well, um, a number of people, like the Brown Brothers and H.L. Hunt and Sid Richardson, Ferguson uh, got very rich off of uh, World War II uh, and, um, and off of New Deal programs, actually, construction and such. Uh, and they were the ones who helped propel the straight to the rock uh, in the 1940s. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm answering your question. Yeah, the, the, the power structure in that department is basically well, the department there's three different uh, cultures or uh, power oh, structures. Okay. Um, I've never heard that before. <laughs> uh, maybe you're right. I, I, 